Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Okay, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and we're going to do building a landmark Covington today. And as I said, this is a real uh, website that we are building for the city of Covington. This comes through Becky Bailey. And uh, if you want to flip over to the first three pages, uh, you've already downloaded the zip. So download the zip from www.nku.org, Becky Bailey, or baileywork.zip. That has all the resources that you need for this, and then unzip those on your desktop. I'm going to do it as well. I haven't downloaded it yet, so let me do it too. And if you open the file, pretty much all you have in the file is uh, a few PDFs and a few images and some of the uh, text uh, for the uh, design work that she gave us. And so let me go through that real quick. Bring this back up. And if you, and so the first thing you're going to want to do is step one is actually look at this design document and go, okay, identify the states and the containers. And uh, what a state is, a state is like a flash frame, and what a container is, is actually like a custom-built component. So I'll pause this right now. We'll talk about it a little bit. So this website is a real website, and uh, the first thing you want to do is when you get a design document like this is try to identify uh, what are the components and what are the states. And so I said states are like different transitions in a sense, like frames and flash. And so a state would be like, okay, it's, a, it's like a page. And uh, then a, a component would be like something that exists, like, for example, see this little welcome component here, a nav component, and uh, a logo component. So these would all be separate components or, that you'd be using to build your uh, website. So what we're going to do is we're going to first look at the states, create a states navigation system, and then we're going to start building out the components and put them in our navigation system. That's how we're going to approach this problem. So actually going through this document, I actually figured out there were probably five states and there are multiple components, okay? So we're going to go to Flex right now, and we're going to build those five states, and we're going to uh, then create the nav system and then start building out the components. So once you've figured out, you know, what your states are, then you want to create a new Flex project, uh, and you're going to create a name. I don't want any special characters in the project name. You want to start with a capital, no spaces, and you want to set the stage size to 968 by 616 and set the layout to vertical. We're going to do all that right now. Okay. Now you might be asking, why in the heck did I choose 968 by 616? Because we've done enough work with web people on the outside, businesses, that we know that's a pretty good size. You know, the old days we used to be around, what, 800 by 600? And that size is increasing, and uh, we don't want to go too far and alienate too many people, but about 90% of the people out there are at a 968 or larger now, for as far as their screen is concerned. So we're pretty happy with that. We've seen businesses are going to this size. We feel comfortable uh, doing that as well. So let's go ahead and bring up Flex and do that one s step two. So this is the Flex screen right here, or the Flex application, and there's two sides here. Here's where you're going to build your application, and here's the nav uh, view. And that's where all the navigation occurs. So what you want to do here is right-click on that screen, that white screen, and hit New, and roll over and click uh, Flex Project. And when you do that, uh, you just give it a name. And I'm just going to call it uh, Mike's uh, Project. And I might put COV just so I can remember it's Covington or something like that. And then when you're done with that, you can just step through all the steps. I just hit Finish because that's all you really need to do. And it creates a project. See suddenly that all these files have been created for me and I'm going to be, specif be specifically working in the SRC folder, the source folder. And uh, what you want to make sure that you do, that you can, there's two views here, there's source view and there's design view. You see that? There's two, two perspectives here. There's actually, the, in a sense, there's the design view and there's the source view and we'll go back and forth between both of them. And uh, so there's my source and there's my design. So what is the first thing I want to do? Well, I've created my project. Now I want, to, I want to do this, set this screen to 916. What does it say? 968 by 616. Let's do that first. We created our project. And uh, let's set the uh, uh, 968 by 616 and then let's set the layout to vertical. So let's go there right now. And uh, what you do is there's go to Windows here and there's something called Flex Properties. Flex Properties allows you to set the uh, properties of the stage or the components or whatever. So click on that, bring that up. There's my flex properties right here. I'm clicked on the stage. You see I got my stage active. See how it's highlighted? If I go over to the flex properties, whatever I have highlighted or clicked on, then you can actually change. If you go all the way down to the bottom, you can see a height and width. You guys see that? Okay, so go ahead and change that to 968. And then 616 is your, your height. So you just, but you have sized your stage to the right size, so we're pretty good right there. So let's move on to the next one. We want to set the layout to vertical, and why the heck do I want to do that? 
It's because, you know, have you noticed when you open up some applications on the web, they're all the way on the one side of the screen? Or, you know, it's, well, they didn't do this. And so you're going to do that process to keep that from happening. Basically, you want your screen, when you build it and you put it on the web, you want to come center. You want to be able to take up the full screen. So where you do that, go to source. And this is this application tag right here. And see where layout is set to absolute. You want to change that to vertical. And you can save that. Now, the neat thing about Adobe Flex, if you make an error and you save it, typically that error will pop up in red. You'll see you got an error. Now, I used to hate this because Adobe Flex was like really you know, difficult as far as debugging was concerned. Old Flash 8, you know, you just put it together and try to live no matter what you did. And I really hated this, but now I love it. Even the smallest error it will catch. What's so cool about this is when you're done with your code, it's rock solid and it's going to run. So I've, I've actually had one weekend where I wrote 3,000 lines of code in one weekend. And Monday morning, it was running, no errors, just because Adobe Flex has such a great compiler. It's a great error catcher. So you're done with that. So next thing you want to do, go back to design view, and you want to actually center something on the stage that all your stuff can be centered in, and you want to choose a canvas component. So Adobe Flex has tons of component containers. So we go over here to uh, Window again, and see this right here, Components? Click on Components, and then all Adobe Flex's components will open up right here on this side of the screen. You can see there's just tons of components here. You see that? There's buttons, there's check boxes, there's color pickers, there's uh, images, there's uh, text. There's just tons and tons and tons of stuff. And what we want to do is choose a canvas. And you'll be using canvas quite a bit. The reason I, I like canvas is because it has an absolute positioning in it. That means you can just throw images or whatever on a canvas and position them however you want. Now I drag that to the stage, and here it is right here. And I'd, what size do you think I want to make that canvas? Right, right. So we're going to change up to the same size. So open up uh, Windows, Flex Properties. And now you see you have the canvas clicked on. It's 200 by 200 or whatever size yours was made. You want to turn that to what? Anyone give me the numbers? 968, right? By 616. And then you can open that up and take a look at it on your screen full size. But you've got this canvas, and it's centered. Bang right in the center. And the reason it's centered in the center is because what? You set the layout to vertical. And so that's pretty fantastic. Now what you want to do is you can start dragging components on. So you want to go back and take a look at your design document. OK, so what we looked at is the first page and the components that we need to build. Now, before we even do that, we're going to go ahead and build the nav system. So we're going to create the states. And there's going to be five states. And we're just going to call them state 01, state 02, state 03, state 04, state 05. Not very imaginative, but hey, it works. So we're going to build those states now in Adobe Flex. So let's come over to Adobe Flex right here. I want to say one thing real quick here. And I've learned this from experience. It's not written in any books. Everyone does this wrong. Is when you build a state, OK, never start in the base state. Now, the reason you don't want to start in the base state is because um, certain things happen, and, and you always need access to that base state. So if you set the base state as your main state, you'll lose access to that base state. You want to always be able to go underneath the system, and that base state, in a sense, is your attic. No, it's your, what do they call it underneath the house? Your, your what? It's, it's a cross space, OK? And if you let your start, start space be something else, like the base, if you let your start space be the base, you lose your cross space, OK? And that's, that's just the way it goes with these applications. Everyone gets it wrong. They always use the base state, but yet they don't build as complicated applications as we do. So we're going to come along here. We're going to show you how to create your states. So what I want you to do is, once again, go to Windows. That's your, kind of your portal to all these different uh, um, nav menus, and hit states. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, X out. Uh, well, here it is. Here's my, here's my state component. I'm going to open this up a little bit so we can see it. All right. So you immediately see your base state right there. This is really simple to create states. I'm going to right click on here and go new state. And I go ahead and hit state 01. No spaces, no special characters. Okay. And just hit OK. Now I can set it as the start state here or I can come back and edit it. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to come back and edit, edit it later. So now when you create your next state, don't create it on the uh, state. Always create from the base state. Okay. And go to state. O2, and create another state, state O3, and create another state, state O4, and create another state, state O5. Now, the neat thing about this is really easy. You can just create as many states as you want. We'll just start with five states right here. 
Okay, so you got your states now. I want to quickly show you how to set the state. Now, if you remember, we didn't set the state at the beginning. If you don't set the state, you'll end up in the base state. That's your start state. But you don't want that to be your start state. You want state 1 to be your start state. So what you do, all you do is right-click on the state and go Edit State. And just choose Set as Start State. When OK, you're set as Start State. So now whenever you run the program, you'll start in state 01.